Hi, Robert Anthony here for Audio Tuts Plus. Most virtual instruments you can buy today have multiple outputs that you can use in conjunction with the sequencer and mixer inside of your host DAW to either layer sounds or to use one instance of the instrument for multiple parts of your song, such as the strings, bass, synth, and so on. Admittedly, I never really used this capability until recently. Before, I would just create multiple instances of, say, Omnisphere or Mach 5, one instance for each sound that I wanted to play on each sequencer track in my project. In addition to using up way more computer resources than needed, this is really limiting the usefulness of the plugins that you have paid a pretty penny for. I want to show you how you can quickly set up your host DAW and plugins to be able to use one instance of the plugin for multiple parts of your song. The basic workflow is the same for any multi-channel instrument. You initiate one instance of the plugin, create multiple sequencer tracks that are sending MIDI data to the single plugin on different MIDI channels. Then, assign the various parts within the plugin to the multiple outputs, and finally out into their own channel strips in the mixer of your host DAW, giving you independent mixing and effects controls over them. So, Let's see how this looks using Motu's Mach 5 3 inside of Personas Studio One 2.5. I'll drag one instance of Mach 5 into the sequencer area. Inside of Mach 5, you can see we have multiple parts which act as independent sound modules inside of this plugin. I'll quickly load in some sounds to each of the four parts. And you can see now, as I play my keyboard, I'm triggering the first part, which is receiving on MIDI channel 1, and is also being sent out of Mach 5 from the main outputs. And finally, back into Studio 1 in the mixer channel strip that was automatically created for the main outputs. So, in order to be able to independently trigger the other parts, we need to now create a new sequencer track and set it up to send its MIDI data to this same instance of Mach 5, but on MIDI channel 2, and so on. And also set the part up to send the audio signal out from the different outputs. I'll hit the letter T on my keyboard to create a new sequencer track in Studio 1. I'll give it a descriptive name. And down here at the bottom, in the output section, I want this sequencer track to send its MIDI data to an existing instrument. And if I select Mach 5 here from the dropdown, you can see all the MIDI channels that you can send MIDI data on. Channel 1 is already being used, so I want to send this new track's MIDI data to MIDI channel 2. I'll hit OK, and now I can play the sequencer track and I'm now triggering the second part inside of Mach 5. So again, the data path is the sequencer track is sitting MIDI data to Mach 5 on Mach 5 channel 2, which I have this part set up to receive on. But now notice that both of these sequencer tracks are being sent to the same mixer channel strip. This is because they are both set to the main outputs inside of the plugin. If you want to have them summed down like this, that's fine, say for layering a bass line or some pads. But if you want to have independent control of the two sounds, just like if you were using two separate plugins, all you have to do is first, inside of the plugin, set the part to send the audio signal out to another output. Then, you have to create a second mixer channel strip to receive the audio signal from the plugin, via the second output. In Studio One, all you have to do is click the instrument pane and click on the instrument you want to create a new mixer channel strip for. You will see a twirl down of all the available outputs. This list will depend on the output capabilities of the synth plugin you are using. I'll check the box next to output 2, and now I've completed the signal routing, 
and I can now control the two parts of this single plugin independently. By setting up your plugins this way, you can use them for as many different parts or layering within your production as you like, saving you valuable system resources and also letting your host DAW run smoother because it's not having to deal with multiple instances of huge plugins. And again, the basic setup workflow is used for any plugin that supports multiple outputs and most DAWs are just as simple to set up auxiliary channel strips to receive the signal from those multiple outputs. As a final example, I'll set up OmniSphere for multi-channel control inside of Logic Pro. I'll create a new sequencer instrument track and load in OmniSphere. In Logic Pro, you need to select the multi-timbral option with eight stereo outputs. Now again, the same setup is needed. Multiple sequencer tracks to be sending on different MIDI channels to the same instance of OmniSphere. In Logic Pro's mixer, you will see a little plus icon on any channel strip that has a multi-timbral instrument loaded in. Clicking the plus icon will add an auxiliary channel strip and automatically select the next available output on the plugin, which is nice. Now here's a little trick. If you toggle the automation on and off, it will quickly create a sequencer track for you and select the next MIDI port, which is exactly what we need. And as you can see, we are now controlling the different parts inside of OmniSphere via the different sequencer tracks. Don't forget to assign the audio outputs of the various parts inside of OmniSphere so they will be fed into the individual mixer channel strips. To sum up what we've learned, I've shown you how to set up a multi-channel virtual instrument inside of your host DAW to have independent control over the various parts within that single instance of the plugin. This allows you to free up your system resources by utilizing only a single instance of that plugin. I hope this gives you some creative ideas on how to better utilize your multi-channel plugins inside of your host DAW. And I hope this helps any of you who may have been running into performance issues. This is Robert Anthony for Audio Tuts Plus. Thanks for watching.